Haitian for God, it is Memorial Day weekend, and that means tons of travelers are expected to hit the highways across the country. More than 42 million people, in fact, according to AAA. Here at home, it has been shaping up to be a very busy day already. Alyssa Cole talked to some people who say they had to budget ahead of time for their gas. With the average price of gas sitting at more than $3 a gallon for regular gas, people tell me they are budgeting carefully to keep their tanks full this holiday weekend. I just put 10 in right now, um, and it's literally go to and from. We're not even making any extra stops. This mom and daughter duo are making a short distance trip from New Braunfels to San Antonio. And with the price of regular gas averaging at $3.13 a gallon in Texas, they say they prepared ahead of time financially. It's worth it because I haven't seen my family and my nephews. They're little guys, so I haven't seen them. The FaceTime can only last so long. Another traveler coming in from Fort Worth to New Braunfels to float on the river. Pulling a camper to come down here, we had to fill it twice. Um, and it was like nine and a half miles per gallon. And it's like $70 to fill up each time. But they say the more than 230 mile trip was worth every dollar spent. It was worth it, but it's still expensive just having those memories, making time and having fun because, you know, everyday life, making money to spend money. And the anticipated busiest travel time for the remainder of the holiday break is Monday afternoon as people prepare to make their way back home. Reporting in New Braunfels, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of traveling, on Friday, the TSA hit its highest volume of traveler in years as millions of them took to the skies for Memorial Day weekend. The agency tweeted this morning that more than 2.7 million passengers were screened at airports on Friday. On Thursday, they screened 2.6 million. This is the highest number of flyers since Thanksgiving of 2019, and they're expecting even more. The TSA predicts over 10 million people will travel over the holiday weekend. And if you're traveling out there this evening in and around the San Antonio area, no big issues expected. A look outside with live cam, though, shows that it's a little bit more cloudy out there this hour. Earlier this morning, we did manage to find a little bit of sunshine but we have seen a few more clouds work their way into the south central Texas sky here this evening. As we head into our Sunday, a few isolated showers to a stray rumble possible. We're going to increase that rain and storm chance slightly on Memorial Day itself. A few scattered storms are expected. It's not going to be for everybody each day, so don't cancel your plans. Temperatures also below average. We'll get you a full look at that future cast and what we can expect in the days ahead after the break. It is the unofficial start to summer this weekend, but not feeling any crazy summer like temperatures. Thankfully, no, exactly. I feel like we're lucking out this year. Last year was a little bit yes. intense. It was I'll hot as a firecracker already. <laughs> okay, good. A little, Memorial Day weekend. A little hot out there. Yeah, I remember how hot it was here in Texas last year. The good news is temperature wise heading into Memorial Day this year. Yes, below average temperatures are still expected. And that's what we found out there today, especially because we saw some of the cloud cover work back in. Highs topped off only in the mid 80s here in San Antonio. Our average high is 89 for this time of year. Check out your Sunday. So any back half of the weekend plans, we're still going to start off in the upper 60s here in San Antonio. We're near 80 already by lunch time and into the afternoon still mid 80s expected and while it's not going to be for everybody we've got about a 30 percent potential for most of the day to find a few isolated showers a couple of rumbles of thunder before the day is done and then we're going to slightly increase that rain chance as we head into memorial day on monday and most of us have been pretty dry today there's a strong storm well north of our area that's approaching the austin area in the i-35 corridor here in san antonio don't have a whole lot going on but just up to the north in Kendall County, stretching over into eastern Kerr County. Maybe a few sprinkles there near Sisterdale and then stretching over closer to the Comfort area along I-10. And then farther off to the west across northern Valverde County over the past hour, hour and a half, we've seen a few very light showers work their way through closer to Pandale in Juneau. A lot of that, though, has fizzled out and is struggling to hold together. Here's the bigger picture, though, across the Lone Star State. Another cluster of rain just to the east of the Lubbock area north of San Angelo. But check out far western Texas and even the eastern portions of New Mexico. Severe thunderstorm watches in place out that way. For you can see a disturbance is already sparking a cluster of rain and thunderstorms. Off the bat, we're not really expecting.
expecting severe weather here in our neck of the woods over the next couple of days, maybe an isolated strong storm further out west here into our Sunday and Monday, but no organized complex of severe weather. So that is the good news. Let me take you through your future cast here, depicting what the radar could look like over the next 48 hours. For most of this evening, we are quiet, but by midnight, that disturbance in West Texas could spark up some rain and a couple of thunderstorms. This complex is expected to track eastward into the pre dawn hours of our Sunday by 3 a.m., potentially impacting places like Uvalde, Lakey, stretching back over to Eagle Pass. It is expected to weaken, though, as it does push farther eastward. Still, though, I think depending on how well it can hold together by wake up time tomorrow morning, a few lingering showers will be possible here closer to San Antonio. And then after that, just isolated activity could pop up and fall down throughout the remainder of the day into the evening hours as well. And then as we head into our Monday on Memorial Day, we're going to see an area of low pressure swing across the Lone Star State. So we're going to bump up the potential to find some scattered hit or miss rain and storms to about a 40 to 50% potential. It's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be a washout of a day, but if you have any outdoor plans, probably a good idea to at least have a plan B in place. Should you briefly need to move those inside? So we'll definitely continue to keep eyes on that here over the next 48 hours. Temperature wise tomorrow and into Monday mornings, we'll start off in the upper 60s, mid 80s for your Sunday afternoon and low 80s on Monday. So yes, a little bit below where we should be for this time of year. 20% chance for a few lingering showers continues into Tuesday. And then after that, for the most part, we're going to dry things out again by the middle to later portions of next week. Some more sunshine returning, helping those temperatures crank back up into the upper 80s and near 90, guys. We deserve it, don't we, Tim? Yes, this is a nice stretch. I'm not saying anything. We're just gonna... <laughs> don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. Stop. Good vibes, good vibes <laughs> all the way. All right, Andrew's here with some good vibes. Tell us about Bernie Champion. Baseball moving on. That is absolutely right. Bernie Champion dropped game one on Thursday. They rallied to win yesterday 3-2. to two, And today in game three, they brought out the bats early. When we come back, we'll break down their huge game three win. Plus, Dak and McCarthy are talking a lot more these days. What does Prescott have to say about the relationship? Next. It is win or go home this afternoon at Jordanton for a decisive Game 3 in the UIL Class 5A Regional Semifinal between Bernie Champion and Corpus Christi Ray. The Chargers strike first in the bottom of the first. Evan Cool ends up on third with a triple. Then Cam Logan steps to the plate and grounds one to the shortstop. Cool beats the throw home and the ball gets away, so Logan ends up on second. Champion draws first blood. It's 1-0. Texans trying to answer in the top of the second with two on, but Sam Miller scoops up a grounder, steps on third, and fires to first for an inning-ending double play. Champion holds on to that one nothing lead until the bottom of the fourth. Gage Goldberg drops the first pitch he sees into left center. Jared Wingo rounds third, stays on his feet, and slides in safe. That makes it 2 nothing champion. The inning continues. Few batters later, Nick Cortez hammers one to the gap in left. That'll play another two runners, capping a three-run inning. Champion goes on to win it 6-2. to two. They rally to win both of the final two games of this series and advance to the regional final. To get the first run on the board, it was the most important thing in the game. We had to get up at the start and just keep on putting them on. It shows we have, um, we have confidence that we can come back. We can win any game we want. The Chargers will face Leander Rouse in the regional final next week. In Class 4A, Davenport dropped Game 2 to Sinton this afternoon, 6-5, meaning that regional semifinal series is tied at a game apiece. Game 3 is currently underway at NEISD Sports Park. The winner there advances to the regional final. For the second time in the last three seasons, the Bernie softball team advanced to the regional final themselves. And once again, the Greyhounds came up short of a state tournament berth against Cal Allen. Last night in a one-game Class 4A regional final playoff, Bernie fell behind the Wildcats. Cats 4 to nothing in the bottom of the third, thanks to a pair of homers before finally getting on the board in the top of the fourth. But they just couldn't keep pace in an 8 to 1 loss. Still, head coach Chester Pettibon is proud of his team and especially his senior class for all they have accomplished. This is not the end, it is the beginning to the next part of your life. Okay, and that you're not going to win everything in life. You're, gonna, you're going to move on and you're going to uh, fight and win. Some days you're going to win and some days you're going to lose, but you got to go on and you got to keep fighting the good fight. That's what we tell them. 
Bernie ends their season with a 29 and 10 overall record. Our Lady of the Lakes first appearance in the NAIA Softball World Series ended this afternoon without a win. Saints dropped game one against Marion University yesterday 6 to 3 and then bowed out of the tournament this afternoon with a 6-5 loss to Midland. Olu finishes their incredible season with a 51 and 8 overall record. In the majors, the Texas Rangers passed a huge early season test with a statement victory over one of the best teams in the American League last night. Facing the Orioles in Baltimore, the Rangers scored eight runs in the top of the fourth, including a grand slam from Corey Seager that gave them a commanding 10 to one lead. They would go on to win the game 12 to two. Manager Bruce Bochy was thrilled with his guys approach at the plate, especially in that eight run frame. I tell you, I, I have seen some good innings, but that, that was really impressive. I mean, Rodriguez was throwing so well. He, he's got 99 out there, and these guys just threw out some really good at-bats. Uh, but really, I, I was impressed with the back end of our order. Those guys did such a good job. Leody, he got us on board uh, with that two-run homer. Smitty had three hits tonight. Uh, Robbie had a good night. Um, and Sandy had a big hit to keep it going. So it's good to get that uh, production throughout the order. Game two of their three game series is currently underway. We'll have those highlights for you tonight on the night beat. This time last week, San Antonio FC looked like they were the best team in the league after knocking off Charleston Battery 7-0. Then they lost in stunning fashion to Detroit City FC 1-0, the worst team by record in the Eastern Conference. Now the Alamo City Club returns to Toyota Field for a three-game homestand, once again looking for answers. And it's going to be tough against New Mexico United, who comes into San Antonio riding a two-match winning streak. You know, they're one of those teams, it's, it's never easy playing against them. they got talent as well. They, they work hard. Um, credit to them. They're always one of those teams that uh, can get a result at any moment. So for us, it's not taking it lightly and really knowing that we're going to have to be at the our A game if we're going to walk away with three points. Kickoff against New Mexico is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. tonight at Toyota Field. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys are roughly a third of the way into their optional organized team activity schedule, and they're in the midst of a four-day break. Dallas's offense got a huge boost from the addition of wide receiver Brandon Cooks in free agency, pairing him alongside number one wideout C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup, who's fully healthy this offseason for the first time in a while. But Kellen Moore is no longer offensive coordinator. Instead, head coach Mike McCarthy is calling plays in practice. Is Dak talking to Mike Moore now these days? Yeah, a ton. I mean, just in the simple fact that he's the play caller now. So right. just being able to understand and being in the same same wavelength and understanding why he's calling the play, what's the purpose of that play, and what he expects out of that, and just making sure that we're on the same accord there. And it has to be that constant communication. As we just said, as he just broke and we said, you know what, go go look at everything we put in, make sure that we're, we're running the things that, that you like and the things that we're good at. And if it's something that, right, you're just a little iffy about, let's get it out. Let's master what we're great at. So just having that clear communication and being able to work with him day in and day out, as I said, it's new, it's refreshing, and uh, it's fun for both of us. You find yourself calling him at night? Night or just no, here? no, 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 nah, I'm good on that one. <laughs> I see him, I see him enough. <laughs> Dallas returns to practice for offseason workouts on May 30th, and their three-day mandatory minicamp begins on June 6th. Texans quarterback C.J. Stroud might be taking reps with the second team in practice, but he's still been impressing the vets. Has anything about Stroud's performance stood out to new head coach D'Amico Ryans? C.J.'s been the same from the pre-draft process to now hard worker, very intelligent guy. He's a, in a true competitor, so he's been the exact same guy. Nothing has changed. It's excited to see him out on the field working with his teammates. Uh, CJ has been doing an excellent job these past couple days. I guess that has something to do with his Ohio State education. I'm not sure. Very smart there they are. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. All I'm right. wearing the wrong colors today, though. Compliments between the two of you. Something's weird. We'll be it's right okay back. okay in May. You can a few generally isolated showers and storms will be possible at times tomorrow. Then we're slightly going to increase that coverage on Monday before those rain chances come down a bit going forward next week. Again, don't cancel your plans for Memorial Day, but have that indoor plan B backup option. Of course, latest updates throughout the weekend can be found on your KSAT Weather Authority app, guys. Wouldn't be Memorial Day without a few showers around here. No That's way. all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tonight on the Night Beat after the game. Have a good evening.